As the sun begins to rise on Jiwoo's 17th birthday, she opens her eyes and puts on her headphones. Sergeant Cho, a detective, happens to be waiting outside her apartment though, following in a car as she heads to school. Having dealt with bullies at school for years because of her father's work with a drug cartel, later that day, Jiwoo is issued a school transfer. The reason was because the other students were too uncomfortable with her presence because of her father's background. Finally, Jiwoo takes matters into her own hands, beating up the bullies who had been tormenting her for so long. After a long day, Jiwoo returns home to find her father Dong Hoon, calling to tell her he couldn't make it to her birthday celebration, frustrated and tired. This was the last straw for Jiwoo as she tells him not to come back. But her father does come back, and with him comes the sound of gunshots. Locking the door, Dong Hoon protects Jiwoo as best he can, but, in the end, he can't stop the inevitable. And, looking through the hole in the door, Jiwoo watches screaming as her father is shot and passes away in front of her. At the funeral, Jiwoo, heartbroken and grieving, meets Dong Hoon's gangster friends, including Mujin, the leader of the organization. When the detectives drop the case, Jiwoo finds herself with little choice but to turn to the gang members for help. However, Mujin tells her to leave because she doesn't have the resolve to kill. Jiwoo, refusing to give up, attempts to do some investigating on her own, but this eventually gets her tied up in the back of a car after walking right into a trap by some low-life thugs. When Mujin comes to her rescue, he takes Jiwoo to a rundown gym on the docks, where a man named Gang Jae shows her the ropes and tells her to do the laundry and dishes to prove herself. Jiwoo accepts the challenge and trains tirelessly, despite constant taunting from the other fighters. Determined to become stronger, Jiwoo trains on her own after hours. When Mujin shows up in a suit, he teaches Jiwoo to not fight to win, but fight to kill. Jiwoo puts on her boxing gloves and takes him on. Furthermore, when she must fight in the massive group competition, Jiwoo exceeds expectations by holding her own against Gang Jae. Determined to avenge her father's death, she emerges victorious, with her eyes set on her ultimate goal, to find her father's killer and make them pay. After the fight, Gang Jae is resentful about being defeated by Jiwoo and, in a fit of anger, spikes her drink, leaving her struggling to remain conscious as Gang Jae and Chiao Ho try to rape her, laughing hysterically as they watch her struggle. Jiwoo, determined to defend herself, ends up stabbing her attacker in the gut with a shard of broken glass from her father's cremation urn. When Gang Jae is brought before Mujin after the incident, he punishes him by slashing Gang Jae's cheek with a knife and kicking him out of the gang. Meanwhile, Mujin is beginning to see potential in Jiwoo and decides to take her under his wing, renaming her Hye Jin and teaching her the ways of the organization, even giving her the police-issued firearm that was used to kill her father. We then skip forward a couple of years, and as time passed, Hye Jin had become a key player in the organization and infiltrated the police force under her new alias, reporting directly to Captain Cha. In secret, however, Hyajin meets with Mujin and reveals her suspicions that Captain Cha was involved in her father's murder. Captain Cha, on the other hand, is determined to capture Mujin, and as he prepares for a confrontation, he puts his faith in Hye Jin, or Jiwoo, as we'll keep calling her. As part of a bold operation, Jiwoo teams up with another narcotics officer, named Pildo, to bring in a drug dealer named Mongo for questioning. Opposites in personality and working style, Pildo is less than thrilled to be working with Jiwoo. But the two manage to put up with each other long enough for Jiwoo to stumble upon a massive gambling house during their operation, take out all the thugs, and bring in Mongo for questioning. Through Mongo, the cops learn about the new dealer in town, Gang Jae, the same Gang Jae who tried to rape Jiwoo. And, with a new drug on the market, Mujin's empire is under threat which is a massive problem, not only for Mujin but also for Jiwoo who is balancing being a narcotics department police officer and a loyal soldier for the drug gang. During an operation set up by Captain Cha to catch Mujin, a gunshot causes chaos and Mujin manages to escape. Although he doesn't arrest Mujin, Captain Cha does find the gun that Jiwoo has planted at the crime scene and discovers that the shots were not fired by the beta team, raising his suspicions that someone within his group is a spy. Meanwhile, back at the fighting gym, Kang Jae launches a vicious and bloody attack that kills most of the men and leaves Taeju, Mujin's right-hand man, injured. When the police find out, Pildo instructs Jiwoo to head to Dongchen Gym, where she finds Taeju alive but surrounded by a bloodbath, with the words I'm back on the floor. Naturally, this massacre worries Mujin, who is determined to silence anyone who might bring more danger to the organization. With no one willing to talk, Pildo encourages Jiwoo to keep searching, and, after a while, the task force manages to finally get a lead on Gang Jae. Seeing an opportunity to catch Mujin, Captain Cha decides to release Mongo, despite the risks. Luckily for Mujin, Jiwoo sent him a message to inform him of the trap and tells him that Cha believes someone from Mujin's organization is going to flip and turn to their side. Hoping to find out who he is meeting, Jiwoo tries her best to follow Captain Cha. 
However, on the rooftop, Jiwoo, hidden behind a motorcycle helmet, bumps into Pildo, and they have a brief scuffle before she slipped away, but not before noticing that it was Taeju who was waiting for Cha. Quickly relaying this information to the gang, we learn that Cha has asked Pildo to check out Jiwoo's police file and that Cha wasn't meeting Taeju at all, it was just a decoy. Still fixated on the gun, Jiwoo learns that it belonged to Corporal Song Junsu, the police recruit who was killed. When she asks Mujin about it, he denies that they were cop killers and accuses Cha of playing dirty. Later that day, after Pildo asks Jiwoo out for a drink, he questions her resolve and her ties to her father. As they watch Gang J conduct an operation, he suddenly turns around and faces them on the balcony. And, realizing it was all a setup, the duo gets attacked by a group of thugs. At the same time, armed guards showed up and blindsided Mujin. After being captured and stabbed in the leg, Jiwoo manages to escape from a car seconds before it is crushed by a car crusher and saves not only herself but also Pildo. Conflicted by her growing affection for her colleagues, Jiwoo is instructed by Mujin to leave the country. But she refuses, determined to still stay in the game, find her father's killer, and take revenge. Little does Jiwoo know that her phone is bugged and all her calls are being monitored by Captain Cha. During a chance encounter at the station, Jiwoo runs into Sergeant Cho who reveals that Dong Hoon's murder had been covered up by Captain Cha. When a manhunt for Gang J is issued, Sergeant Cho confronts Mujin at the docks, who, despite having bought his silence with drugs, kills Cho anyway, dumping his body in the water. Jiwoo, unaware of the ongoing sting operation, tells Mujin that Captain Cha has received a call from Gang J informing the cops that he is about to flee the country and offering to give the police valuable information in exchange for immunity. When Gang J and Mujin finally came face to face, the narcotics department officers surrounded them, and Jiwoo, unaware of the plan, finds herself holding Gang J at gunpoint. Forced to make a decision and scared that Gang J might reveal her true identity, Jiwoo shoots him twice and watches as he falls to the ground. Finding herself in trouble with the police after shooting Gang J in self-defense, Pildo encourages Jiwoo to relax and open up about her past. When Jiwoo shares her traumatic experience of being nearly raped by Gang J, Pildo begins to understand not only her motivations but also that there might be more to Jiwoo than what is in her file. The next morning, Jiwoo receives a package from Gang J that contains a photo of her father in the police force. Newly sparking her curiosity, she heads to the mountain temple where Mujin is hiding out and receiving treatment. There Mujin tells her that her father was an undercover officer who was betrayed by his colleagues and was killed by Captain Cha. Following their conversation, Mujin tasks Taeju with killing Captain Cha, so, when Jiwoo arrives to confront the cop, he is already stabbed and wounded. Despite being on the brink of death, Captain Cha explains to Jiwoo the truth about her father. In a letter from her father, Jiwoo learns that Dong Hoon was a true cop until the end and had even given Mujin a gold lighter with a tracker inside. Finally realizing that everything she had thought was wrong, Jiwoo burns the gang's tattoo off her chest with a cigarette lighter in one of the most painful and dramatic moments of the show. Not one to be left in the dark. As the investigation into Captain Cha's attack progresses, Mujin quickly realizes that Jiwoo has uncovered the truth about Dong Hoon's murder and orders her to be killed. Attacked by three goons outside her apartment and dragged to a bath full of water to be drowned, Jiwoo fights back, which is when Taeju appears. Things take an even darker turn. Taeju reveals that he was the one who killed Dong Hoon. Jiwoo kills Taeju in a vicious fight. Meanwhile, despite going to the mountain temple, Pildo and the other cops could not be more surprised when they see Mujin walking into the police station, giving himself up for questioning. During the interrogation, Jiwoo shows up, and Mujin reveals that he can prove that he was not responsible for stabbing Captain Cha. According to Mujin, his proof comes in two forms. First, the knife that he used was removed from the evidence, and second, the CCTV footage from the night of Cha's death matched Jiwoo's car and description. Realizing she needs to save herself from being found guilty of a crime she didn't commit, Jiwoo manages to escape the police station with the knife, which she throws in the river, making it clear that Jiwoo is coming for revenge. When Mujin returns to the fighting gym, he is met by Taeju's corpse, understanding that he needs to make Jiwoo confront him personally. When she is arrested, Mujin arranges for Jiwoo to escape with the help of an undercover nurse during a hospital transfer. In the meantime, Pildo receives a call from Captain Cha who has woken up from his coma and revealed the truth about Jiwoo and her relationship with Dong Hoon. Realizing they have the wrong person, Pildo puts his trust in Jiwoo and handcuffs himself to her as a desperate ploy to stop them from driving off to Jiwoo's death. A car chase soon happens as Pildo and Jiwoo work together to evade Mujin, eventually losing them on the road and arriving at an abandoned beach villa, where they end up not only making love but deciding to stick together to stop Mujin no matter what. The next day, with an arrest warrant out for him, Mujin loses control and, riding a motorcycle, shoots Pildo in cold blood. As his body slumps lifelessly on her lap, 
Jiwoo grabs his gun and takes off into the street. Gun in hand, Jiwoo heads straight into Mujin's club and ruthlessly fights through the room. Leaving a single bullet, she rides the elevator up to the penthouse and, despite only holding one bullet in her handgun, she takes out a hallway's worth of soldiers, leaving her one-on-one -on -one with Mujin. After a very tense conversation, the two agree to fight to the death in an intense knife duel, which ends with Jiwoo stabbing him in the throat. As the police arrive at the scene, Jiwoo stumbles away, leaving a trail of blood behind her. The series ends with a shot of Jiwoo paying her respects to her father, placing a picture of herself and Dong Hoon together on his grave, as well as her visiting Pildo's grave. In one last heartbreaking scene, 